Dax is a YouTube rapper that blew up on the platform due to focusing on conscious lyrical rap, and back in 2018, he made a promise aimed at KSI on his Killshot music video. During this music video, he promised KSI three things. That in about a year, he was going to be the biggest rapper in the industry, and how he would also win a Grammy and an Oscar. This promise came out in 2018, right at the beginning of the KSI and Dax beef. But four years later, he hasn't won an Oscar or Grammy and has struggled to create a new image outside of just being a YouTube rapper. This struggle to build a mainstream image could be due to a number of reasons, but since making these promises to KSI in 2018, KSI has grown as an artist, going platinum with two different songs and has a legit career within mainstream music. So why has Dax struggled to build an image outside of YouTube after being so certain that he would eventually be a mainstream artist? Well, to get to the answer of today's video, we have to start from the beginning to understand where Dax wandered off the path of eventually breaking out of the YouTube rapper mold. Now, as we have learned from pretty much every track Dax has released over the past four to five years, before Dax started taking rap more seriously, he was just a janitor working the overnight shift for two and a half years while he was still going to college at Newman University. Before he wrote his first poem, Dax believed that he was going to go pro with basketball one day. During a DJ Vlad interview, Dax tells Vlad that basketball was something that he wanted to pursue ever since he was in the seventh grade. But during his pursuit to become a pro basketball player, he figured out that he had a natural talent to write poems and rap. At that point, when he had that realization that he can be more than just a basketball player, that's when he started to take rapping more serious and focused more on his career as an artist rather than an athlete. Dax got to work creating his very first song that he could upload to the internet. The very first music video uploaded to Dax's YouTube account was called Drake One Dance featuring Kayla and Wiz Kid Spoken Word, where he raps over Drake's iconic beat for his song One Dance. At the start of Dax's career, he did a lot of remixes over iconic beats. He started with Drake's One Dance, but quickly moved on to remixing other people's songs like for Designer's song, Timmy Turner. At the time, this was Dax's first viral song titled Hilly 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 Clinton, where he talks about the political parties and how he thought Hillary Clinton was going to beat Trump by a landslide and how he's afraid that Trump is going to be ruining the country. These music videos did okay to get Dax some spotlight, but the big break came in the form of another music video featuring Danielle Bergoli. Well, actually just her catch me outside phrase that she said during her time on the Dr. Phil show. This song was called Cash Me Outside and gained over 22 million views and was the fifth video ever uploaded to Dax's YouTube account. Now Dax was really good at using current situations to his advantage and this music video was a prime example of that. Daniel Bergoli was a meme that took off on social media and Dax capitalized on her name and how she was a trending topic all the while not even having to have her in the video or a verse on his song. Dax was just using samples of her meme which was a smart move. This garnered the attention of Dax's eye. Titles. Hobson jumped on a track with Dax called You'reWorthIt.com, which received some negative feedback from the community, but mostly from Anthony Fantano, who said the music video made absolutely no sense and it was corny. After this song came out, Dax announced that he was releasing his first EP titled It's Different Now. When this EP came out, it again had pretty bad reviews, and over on the website Album of the Year, it only received a rating of 34 out of 100, with 30 people rating the EP. A lot of the comments stated that the EP was boring and didn't live up to the hype. The highest rating it received was 60 and even the reviewer stated that the EP was a waste of your time to listen to, stating that the only good songs were the last three, but the first four songs sounded all the same. In November of 2018, Dax went on a hot streak starting the month off with a song called She Cheated Again that captured the eyes of 24 million people. 12 days later, Dax uploaded another freestyle over MGK's Rap Devil beat, and if you remember, Rap Devil was a diss track aimed at Eminem. This video gained 27 million views. A week after Dax's Rap God video came out, KSI was on one of the very first episodes of the What's Good podcast with Mini Minter and Randolph. Now, during this podcast, KSI takes direct shots at Dax. He stated that Dax is a poor man's Hobson and that Hobson is a poor man's Eminem. Then says later on that Dax is just corny. I mean, I guess there's Dax, but like, <laughs> I didn't know him. <laughs> That's it. I mean, but he's a, a poor man's Hobson and Hobson is a poor man's Eminem. And so Eminem, is would, Kendrick. Uh, yeah, and, and Eminem is a poor man's country. Yeah, and Eminem is a poor man's country. So, that, so why that. would anyone want to listen to a poor man's poor man, poor man? This sparked a back and forth with KSI and Dax, where Dax released a diss track called Kill Shot. This wasn't a direct diss track aimed at KSI, but it did take some shots at him and how mentioning KSI's name in a song garnered views. During his shots at KSI, he promised that he would be at the top of the rap industry, win a Grammy, but not just a Grammy, but an Oscar as well. And Dax was going to accomplish all of this in just a year. After this diss track came out, KSI responded in a video where he reacted to these diss tracks that were made on him and stated that Dax's song was a lot better than the other stuff 
that he was releasing, but that it was still bad and wasn't that good as a diss track. After this, KSI released his own diss track called Aries that also took a small jab at Dax, saying that his music is whack. KSI responded to Dax's short diss with a quick diss of his own. But around this time, it seemed like Dax got way too full of himself after the month of November because during that month, he had multiple videos gain over 20 million views and probably felt like he was hitting his stride on YouTube and eventually would branch out to the mainstream. Dax's head got way too big and during this time, the YouTuber Crip reached out to Dax for a collab on a track. Crip asked Dax what it would cost for a feature and Dax told him $3,000, but because Crip was his friend, he would only charge him $1,000. Dax agreed to that price, but with that price, Crypt also asked Screw and Quadeca if they wanted to hop on the track as well and told them that the track was going to be iconic. Dax sent over his very first verse that was 26 seconds long, but after hearing Screw's verse and Quadeca's verse, he asked Crypt if he could change his verse. The final verse was Dax stating that he was on the track with three guys and he was the GOAT, which pissed them all off. Also, Dax scammed Crypt out of another $500 to record himself in the studio rapping his verse. While the other two guys didn't ask for any money from Crypt, they just thought it was going to be iconic to be on a track together. The song came out and Crypt found out pretty quickly that Dax was dissing him and the song behind his back. Crypt eventually released a video explaining the whole situation. Asked you, and you can check everything. Every message I've ever sent him, I never once asked him to push the song. The song has 1.4 million views without him doing anything with it whatsoever. What I'm so upset about is that he fucking lied to me. He just straight up lied to me because my fans see that he's not pushing the song and they're questioning him on it. I never said anything about it. Never said anything about Dax not pushing the song. My fans realized it. They realized he wasn't doing shit with it and they're hitting him up in the DMs like why aren't you saying this song and the thing that irritates me the most is that he said he didn't like the song or believe in it at all even though well, he's telling me in messages that it's fire and that it's legendary he's excited for the video to drop send me the song so I can put it in my drive but then behind my back saying that he doesn't like the song at all doesn't believe in it the video and audio is not a quality and all this other shit it's like bro if you don't like the fucking song tell me I'm, I'm a man okay I am a fucking man tell me don't just go behind my back saying shit don't lie to my face I can't fucking stand a liar okay and that's what all this is about he lied and when you lie to me it really pisses me off and if you lie to me once that means you'll lie to me again so fuck you i'm not doing it and that's why i haven't contacted dax whatsoever because he lied to me at once what's gonna stop him from lying to me again okay. now for some reason dax was pretty gassed around the start of the new year and he tried to go after a rapper in the industry that already made a name for himself in january of 2019 tory lanes tweeted out that he was the best rapper out right now and that he would body anyone in the industry and for some reason Dax took that personally, and on February 8th, 2019, released a diss track titled I'm Not Joiner or Don Q. During the song, Dax stated that he has a fetish for dead bodies and he'll eat Tory alive. After this diss track, a clip circulated online of Tory Lanez pressing Dax, telling Dax to apologize. Come here, this shit, or, or this shit's not gonna end, my nigga. Or this shit's not gonna end. Apologize, bro. Apologize, bro. Oh, you know, oh, you know what's going on. Apologize, my nigga. Apologize, nigga. I got you, bro. Apologize, nigga. I got you, man. Say I'm, sorry, nigga. My bad for the Say sorry, nigga. Sorry, G. All right, bet. I got you, G. Now, a lot of people thought Tory Lanez was mad about the diss track, but a YouTuber by the name of Progress stated otherwise. In Progress's video, he talks about how Tory was actually mad that Dax posted a conversation between him and Tory Lanez for clout, which made Tory Lanez upset. The video of Dax getting pressed by Tory Lanez gained millions of views, and Dax was invited onto the No Jumper podcast, where he stated that Tory was upset about the diss track and how Dax started to get jumped in the club that he was in and was able to get away, but Tory Lanez's goons chased him up until Tory started to record the video. I just remember like talking to like Dice Soho and all of a sudden just like boom I get hit and I'm just like shit what the fuck's going on while you're still inside the show yeah while I'm still inside there you know like, like her tweet she already said it boom so I'm started getting hit I'm like damn I'm on fire so I'm like looking I just see a bunch of like big ass niggas so I start backing up and now I'm like swinging like pushing and then I get up and I get out like I was God's grace I got out right yeah and so then what happens once you're outside and I sprint and then motherfuckers chase me and then people know the rest of the story. And so you had no idea that this was Tory Lanez's goons running up on you? Honestly, I, I don't know who, I don't know who, I didn't see no faces when I got jumped inside there, so I don't know who did it. Right. I go, boom, I turn the Warner, whoop, whoop, and then, skirt! Thing pulls up. Now I'm running, boom, 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 boom. Dudes run after me, boom, boom, boom. I'm on the floor at one point. I'm like, I'm like, oh shit. I'm on the, I'm on the floor and I'm like, yo, this is not that serious. I calm down like crazy. And then like everyone else calmed down. Now this story changed a bunch from the different times that Dax have said it, but Tory Lanez went on IG Live with DJ Academics and talked about the whole situation to get some clarity. I randomly see this nigga. This whole like, yo niggas jumped him and that. We didn't do nothing to this nigga. 
I seen this nigga. They started running down the street. I run down the street. So the, we in a car, so I don't know how far you're gonna run. So I'm like, oh, this nigga, boom. So we stop by this nigga. I'm just like, bro, those like an nigga. <laughs> we pull up to the nigga. He's out of breath, bro. I'm just like, bro, just apologize, bro. I see this nigga saying a bunch of wild shit. After this, Dax once again tweeted at KSI, stating that if KSI spoke about him one more time, that he would take a trip out to London. KSI told him to come through for a sparring session, but when it started to become all too real for Dax, he started making excuses as to why he wouldn't be able to come to London. During this interaction, he tried to gas himself up by saying that he had a tour to do and how he was making thousands of dollars to do the tour. After this, Dax continued to upload music videos regularly and hit an all-time high with his song called Dear God that gained over 50 million views. It was very controversial but again this was all promotion to get more buzz around his name so that he can get more people to listen to his new EP that was releasing soon. Dax released his second EP titled I'll Say It For You and even though reviews were better than the previous EP it still had a lower rating and reviewers on the website Album of the Year stated it was boring and it was disappointing that Dax had this talent but he doesn't use it effectively. Now I want to focus on one review in particular that states Dax's first album sucks. I really have no patience for a man who has shown time and time again that he can make really good bangers and singles, and then makes projects for the songs that not only don't fit his skill set, but feel so boring. At 22 minutes long, this album drags on so much. Each song feels 6 minutes long, agonizingly slow and repetitive production, with Dax repeating the same basic questions on every single song. The reviewer ends it off saying that this is a colossal waste of time. This EP came out in March of 2020 and was another hit to Dax's legacy outside of YouTube. Up to this point, Dax was racking up views on YouTube but has yet to have a song go platinum or get recognition from mainstream artists. And every EP that was released even before the KSI beef struggled to get good reviews. Dax was doing well on YouTube but again was struggling to make a name for himself outside of the platform. After Dax's I'll Say It For You EP came out, he fell deeper into the category of being a corny rapper. He would hit rock bottom when he made a song with another very controversial rapper named Tom McDonald. Now, if you don't know who that guy is, maybe this will jog your memory. My generation got our driver's license at 14, had a job at 16, and moved out at 17. Your generation is still trying to define what a woman is and living in your parents' basement until you're 35. My generation grew up on uncensored everything. Your generation censors everything. My generation shot guns, rode dirt bikes, and went camping for fun. Your generation stares at your phone all day and dances on the internet in your sister's underwear. My generation knew how to make decisions, important ones. Your generation can't even decide which bathroom to use. My generation wants the truth and the facts, no matter how uncomfortable they are. Your generation is so offended that the truth and the facts don't support whatever outlandish bull is floating around in your imagination that you've started labeling everything that you don't agree with as misinformation. My generation has two genders. Your generation has 89,347 and counting. My generation judges people on whether or not they're an asshole. Your generation judges people on race, weight, 
religion, sex, gender, financial standing, something that they tweeted 20 years ago in gray. I can only describe Tom McDonald as a conspiracy rapper. I mean, if that even makes sense. He released songs like Straight White Male and Fake Woke and got the backing of right wing Republicans in America, which is why he has a fan base. Dax and Tom McDonald jumped on a song called Propaganda. This song is filled with conspiracy theories and the visuals show that the news is lying to Americans and how America prioritizes the vaccine over pentagrams of propaganda or I don't know, some shit like that. At least that's what Tom says. Let me just take a crack at this one time. All I see is pentagons of the propaganda, but our priorities a vaccine. Okay, I have no clue what that implies, but I'll, just moving on. This collaboration with Tom McDonald was Dax's way of expanding his audience, but in a way, he lost the respect of his widespread audience by pandering to a demographic that is very small and very uncommon for the music scene, focusing way too much on conspiracies, which again, it's just corny. Dax released his very first debut album called Paint Paints Paintings, which received even worse reviews than his past two EPs, getting a rating of 16 out of 100 from 61 reviewers. After releasing his debut studio album in October of 2021, Dax has struggled to gain the same amount of traction that he once captivated. In the last 12 months alone, Dax has only had one mega viral video that reached over 41 million views with a song called Dear Alcohol. But other than that song, his other music hasn't really picked up steam as they once did. I saw a Reddit post from r slash hip hop 101 that asked why Dax is so hated and this redditor couldn't have said it any better. He's a talented young artist. The issue is he clearly doesn't know what to do with his content. He's so focused on remixes and portraying an edgy yet safe persona that it's hard for more experienced rappers to take him seriously. Like I said, Dax is dripping with talent. He could be great, borderline amazing, but he just doesn't know what to do with his gifts. When Dax first took off on YouTube, he was destined to be a mainstream artist, but slipped into stupid controversies and chased clout, but also put people down to lift himself up without having the credentials to do so. The beef between Dax and Tory Lanez was stupid on Dax's part, and it made it to where other mainstream artists don't respect him or take him serious. Also, Dax is just a bad person who tries to betray a god complex and acts as if he's spreading love, but behind closed doors, he's scamming other YouTubers and talking bad behind other people's backs. Now, being a YouTube rapper isn't the be all end all. Filthy Frank is a great example of how you can drop a thriving gimmick and break out of a character you are playing online. Dax has always had this I'm better than you mindset that can get repetitive in his songs, and with nothing to show for it, people don't respect that statement. I feel like potential Dax fans get bogged down by his lyrics and how he speaks about the same situations over and over again. Like for example, he speaks about being a janitor a lot in his music, or speaks about how he gets no recognition or respect from the industry for his work. It comes off as a jealous content creator who does rap part time, who feels like he deserves way more but doesn't. The reason why Dax has been stuck in a loop of almost making it to mainstream but then falling back into his old habits is because of his decision making and people can see right through his persona and can tell he's just clout chasing which isn't respected. This is the reason why someone like KSI can get huge features on his music and become friends with people in the industry because he never clout chased or put anyone in the music industry down to lift himself up. And even though Dax thinks he's better than KSI through music, he still can't get those huge features on his tracks. Now over the past couple of months, Dax has grown audience on TikTok and the biggest video that I've seen is this one. where people stitched the TikTok with their own freestyles. People again pointed out that it was pretty corny for Dax to be almost 30 years old, putting on a costume and asking people to freestyle on his TikToks. He has now grown an ego because on TikTok, he passed Justin Bieber for most viewed artists. So you know he had to put the screenshots and flex it on Twitter. Dax is a rapper that had loads of talent and potential with how he could rap on just about any beat and his storytelling was really good, but he's been stuck with the label of being a poor man's Hobson and a YouTube rapper. And because of this, his career will probably head in the same direction as Hobson, with having a cult following but never really breaking out to the mainstream music. This is what happens when you claim you're the best at something but make the wrong moves to get publicity. This has been the result of clout chasing for views. But this has been the end of the video. If you have any content creators you want me to make a video on, the best way to suggest them to me is through my Instagram by direct messaging me or join the Discord. Both will be linked in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.